G'day my fellow media collectors and welcome to the comic book movie collector's guide your show about collecting all things superhero cinema I'm your host Troy and today we are going to review Spy Smasher the 1942 film serial on DVD and we're going to try and answer the question is this the best film serial of its generation Whew, what do you say we check it out Justice, the super friends are reviewing Spy Smasher, a live action superhero film serial totaling 12 chapters, each with an average runtime of 16 minutes each. The first chapter was released into theatres on the 4th of April 1942, with each following chapter being released each week thereafter for 12 weeks. The film serial has been released by several different publishers as the film is now in public domain, with it first being released on VHS on the 30th of May 1995, with a DVD release on the 14th of June 2019 and a Blu-ray release on the 1st of January 2020, with no 4K HD release as of this video. It was written by Ronald Davidson, Norman S. Hall, William Lively, Joseph O'Donnell and Joseph Poland, with it directed by William Whitney. The film was produced and distributed by Republic Pictures. Spy Smasher is the most highly regarded serial of its time, and in 1966, an edited down version of the film was made into a TV movie under the title Spy Smasher Returns. Okay, this is the version I have, and I'll I'll be running a lot of different versions up here. I'll show the VHS one first, and then I'll go through some of the other versions. There are many versions out there because, like I said before, like in the intro, this is in public domain, so there's no... I don't think there is any official release from like a proper distribution company or anything and most of the copies you will find probably 90 percent of them will be homemade jobs and i actually thought this was a proper one turns out it's a homemade job as well but i did pick this one because i like the look of it more so than some of the others which looked a little amateurish um but yeah look at that 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 looks pretty good to me and on the side that does stick out i don't mind that and it's just some shots. They're only what they could source off the internet and a nice little spiel on there. Not too bad at all. As you can see, it's a two disc set uh, and literally no effort put into the discs. Uh, considering how good the cover looks, I'm really surprised at how they put little to no effort in on these discs. That's just me. If I was gonna make this, I would do a little bit more of those discs as well. Um, overall, look, the quality of it's pretty good when you watch it, uh, even though it is a, a bootleg copy, well, well bootleg-ish, as you say. But look, overall, this isn't too bad. And uh, like I said, have a look around, pick the one you like, because you're not actually gonna find a relatively official copy, not as far as I'm aware. Um, so anyway, yeah, I do mind, I, I like this one probably more than the others, but still needs a little bit of work. So I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. So, the movie introduces us to Alan Armstrong, also known as Spy Smasher, a freelance American agent on a mission to take down a German spy ring headed by the sinister Mask. After reuniting with his twin brother Jack, they team up together to fight the Nazi forces of the Mask and try to foil his many plans to bring down the United States during World War II. The Empire will fall. The story itself is very much like a comic book in a way, with uh, the serial almost being like episodes in a TV show, more so than the traditional movie style serial uh, that breaks up the like one story into 12 pieces. Now, this being a serial, it doesn't, it does for, uh, follow the tried and true format of all like the cliffhanger serials, which follows it to the end of each episode. The hero looks like he's about to die, but the next episode, survive, move the story forward, hero gets in trouble again, rinse and repeat, 
12 times. Again, I love repetition. But this serial did do it differently, where we got a new adventure across each of the episodes, and not just one story arc across the whole thing, which shows in the script as it was very tight with the dialogue and story. Uh, as you have multiple small stories and not this one drawn out one, uh, this serial was all about the action and the stunts and less about the thrilling story, shall we say. But that that wasn't a bad thing. Um, they did a good job of giving you enough story to tie it all together. But like the Phantom serial I reviewed uh, last year, the same thing happened with this one, is where the ending was so short and sweet, it just felt so anticlimactic. You feel a bit let down after watching almost three and a half hours of this serial. And then when you get to the end, the ending is literally about a minute long and wraps everything up so neat and quickly, you kind of feel ripped off. I think we all just feel a little shortchanged. Look, overall, this was one of the better ones when it comes to these serials. So for that, look, I'm definitely going to give this a 25 out of 30. So, Spy Smasher is a hero that originated in Wiz Comics back in the 1940s, which then, a couple of decades later, he was brought into the DC Comics fold. And from all accounts, the rendition of the character are pretty faithful to the comic book source material. Though, the only addition to this serial that was not in the comics uh, was Spy Smasher's twin brother, Jack. They're twins. It's crazy, right? The most notable thing uh, about this serial is the action, stunts, and set pieces, as this was, I believe, one of the most expensive serials Republic Pictures had done at that time. And you can really see it on screen with the exploding buildings, car chases, gun shootouts, etc. Now, as I mentioned before, it was more focused on the action than the story, and the fight scenes were probably ahead of their time, actually. Now, they're not like the fight scenes we have today in the movies where they're all, like, super well choreographed, and it's almost like they're dancing as, as opposed to fighting. No, these were straight-up brawls. All fast, gritty. I mean, they really looked like they were kicking the shit out of each other. For real. They're all gonna kill each other! Now, I will have the cast up here, and uh, everyone did a pretty standard job for the day, of course. Uh, no real standouts amongst them for me, but I did feel that our main star of the serial, Kane Richmond, as Spy Smasher and his twin brother Jack, did a really great job of playing the two roles. I felt like he managed to convey the two different personalities, um, which some sometimes were a little subtle at times, like it wasn't anything major, but I felt like you knew which twin he was playing at any given time on screen, which I think is a great effort. With all of this put together, it's not hard to see why this serial is the one people talk about the most as being this gold standard when it comes to these film serials. And that's why I'm gonna give it a 19 out of 20. So we do have some special features, but they don't have them listed here. They've actually got them listed on the discs and they include a picture gallery and stunt reel. So this is something uh, I have on my version and I'm not sure, because there's so many different ones out there, you could have something different altogether. Now, look, are they special? Hmm. Yeah, no, nah, not really. Look, the photo reel is just a dump of photos, which if you just look up Google, it's all of those photos and it was like someone just grabbed it and put it on. Um, and as far as the stunt reel goes, it is just all the action sequences picked out of the movie, cut together in one long sizzle reel, which wasn't interesting considering I only just watched the movie, then I watched the special feature. So yeah, I'd already seen it all. So nothing special really. Anyway, at least it's got something I suppose. So I can't really argue with that. Uh, so look, I'll probably give it a token score of, I don't know, three out of 10. Now, the critic score came in at, well, 0%, and the audience score was 98%. Wow, that is a huge score. No real surprise of the critics, because, let's face it, Rotten Tomatoes wasn't around then. Uh, but as far as the fan score goes, holy Jesus, that thing is off the chart. But this does reflect how much this serial is held in higher esteem out there by fans of the genre. So look, if we round it up, because there's no need to round it up, it is going to be a 10 out of 10. 
So I was wanting to review at least one of these old time cereals each year of doing this show. And after I did the Phantom last year, I kind of looked through my collection and I found this one with the tagline, the most action packed cereal ever made. So I thought, well, with that kind of uh, tagline, how could I go wrong? So I thought I'd give it a go. And you know what? They were not wrong. This has been touted by some as the OG action movie that inspired an entire genre. And watching all, uh, watching this all, I can only think of it like a, a 1940s John Wick action movie where it was light on the story, but heavy on the action and spectacle. This could be the most action packed one yet, right? Look, I found it to be entertaining and fun and something that you didn't really get bogged down in with like drawn out story or dialogue. Though the structure of the serial though, um, it really threw me. It would be, instead of being the one continuous storyline, which it kind of loosely was, it was more like TV episodes out of whack. You see, in a normal TV episode, you have a beginning, middle and an end per episode. Whereas these episodes were broken up into an end, then a beginning and a middle. So the story would change mid episode and it felt weird as it was all based on the cliffhanger formula. But the cliffhanger was always at the end of the second act, which meant you started the next episode with your final act from the previous story. This has put me all out of whack. Look, this is not hard to see what the fuss is about. It, honestly, if you are looking to watch one of these classic serials, honestly, give this one a watch as you will not be disappointed. So with that, look, I'm going to give this a 17 out of 20. So, first up is collectability, and if we look at the collector scale, I would say this would be for your comic fan and up, as this is definitely something you should watch at least once, and would probably be a great addition to any collector's collection. Now, as far as availability goes on this one, is definitely on the average side of things, as there is no real uh, official release of the DVD or Blu-ray out there, and because the movie's in the public domain, uh, most of the copies out there are just homemade versions, which there is no shortage of copies uh, on your second-hand markets like eBay. Look, as far as your average price goes, you are looking at somewhere between, uh, wait for it, $20 to $65 uh, for the DVD and Blu-ray. So the price really does vary on who you buy it from. So look, do yourself a favor and don't get ripped off as the quality is same across the board. No one copy is worth more than another. And it's just some people out there just trying to scam a buck out of people. And of course, look, there is nothing for 4K HD as of this video. Now, for the final score, we get a grand total of 80 out of 100. Oh, wow. Which, let's face it, that, for an old-timey cereal, that is a pretty damn good score. But it's well-deserved as well. So look, we asked the question, is this the best film cereal of its generation? Yes, a buy a long shot. This is by far the best 40 cereal I have ever seen. So if you enjoy some old time cinema like I do, by all means, do yourself a favor and go out and get yourself a copy. I'd buy that for a dollar. Hey, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of my reviews, why don't you click that one there? Or maybe you want to see some of my collection updates. Hey, got you covered too. Why don't you click that one there? And of course, don't forget to do the most important thing. Throw me a bat like. Don't forget to hit that subscription button on the way out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.